Welcome back to another episode of Get Intentional with Mary. In today's episode, we have a special guest, Dr. Julia Branwell, who will be sharing her insights on IV nutrient therapy, peptide therapy, and ketamine treatment. Have you heard of any of these types of treatments? Get ready to dive deep into the world of holistic wellness and learn about cutting edge therapies that can transform your mental and physical well-being. Dr. Julia will be talking about her experience with IV infusions and the powerful combination of vitamins, minerals, and amino acids that can actually be customized to meet your needs. We're also going to be discussing the benefits of bypassing the gut and liver through IV delivery, which allows for higher doses of these nutrients to be absorbed by the body. It's an incredibly fascinating episode, and it might be a little sciencey for you, but I promise you that you are going to learn a lot. And you'll definitely want to listen to the end because this is where Dr. Julia dives a little deeper still into ketamine treatment and how it has impacted mental health for the better. So go ahead and grab your favorite beverage, find the cozy spot, and get ready to get intentional with Mary and Dr. Julia Bramwell. Welcome to Get Intentional with Mary. This podcast is for the busy woman who appreciates working hard and also playing hard. This show will focus on lifestyle, entrepreneurship, wellness, amazing interviews, and what every woman needs to live a successful and fulfilled life. Be sure to subscribe, share with friends, and leave a review. Now let's get on with today's topic. Welcome, Dr. Julia, to Get Intentional with Mary. And I'm excited to have you here today as you educate us on not just IV infusions, but how it is that these IV infusions work and how they can benefit everyone, not just women over a specific age, but actually everyone. So I'm really curious, though. You're a doctor, you've been practicing for a long time now, and I'm curious to know how it is that this journey has led you to IV infusions. Tell us about that. Okay, wonderful. So my name is Julia Bramwell. I am a medical doctor. I'm actually a board certified pediatrician, and I have been for 25 years. But last year, around this time, I decided to change my medical career. At that time, I was age 49 years old, and I was experiencing my own health struggles. For example, I had depression, I was overweight, I had low energy, I had high cholesterol, I had high blood pressure, I have a history of cancer with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and I felt, even though I myself am a medical doctor, I felt like I had a hard time finding good medical care for myself. Mm -hmm. So I decided to look into other modalities to try to regain my own health. And in so doing, I opened up this medical practice, which I now do full time. So I ended up leaving my pediatric job as an employee to do this full time. So that's how I came to open up, invest in my health. So that's amazing because sometimes we don't learn about different types of therapies and modalities until we actually go through through the hard things. And this is more of a reactive situation. I believe that happens a lot with with people in general. Like we sometimes wait until something's happening to finally do something about it. But what you do now is considered so proactive. But tell us before we get into all of that, what were some of the modalities that helped you specifically when you were going through your depression and dealing with your illness? Yeah. So I have learned over many years that the mind and the body are one. You cannot separate the the two. So if there are past traumas, stress that has been in your past that has not been adequately dealt with, that is going to make your body sick. And if you try to address your physical problems just from the standpoint of, let's say, you know, tackling your high cholesterol with a medication or even with a special diet, it's not going to work because you have to address the mind-body connection. So I invested in fixing my mental health first. So I hired a diet recovery coach, because my problem was 
disordered eating and binge eating. And even though I'm a doctor, I'm not a perfect person, obviously, and nor does anybody have that expectation, of course, but I, I had a food addiction and I tried so many different things over the past few decades. I tried, of course, self-help books and all kinds of like, binge recovery books. I tried following, you know, health coaches on social media. I went to Overeaters Anonymous. I tried therapy. I tried, of course, like every diet, which that didn't work. So the diet recovery coach helped me to address a lot of traumas from my childhood up until this time. And that helped me to get a better relationship with food. And it helped my mindset overall so that I was able to heal my body. From from there, it was it's it's multifactorial. You know, once you start working on your mental health, then you can work on your physical health as well. And that included the vitamin infusions that I did for myself, intramuscular injections. I did ketamine therapy, which I can talk about. And more recently, I started peptide therapy, which is a whole new world of of awesomeness that I'm really excited about. But it was all those things together that helped improve my health drastically in one year's time. And I mean, you know me from a year ago. I I don't know if it's as clear to you as it is to me. Like I I think I look better. I definitely feel better. And just in in a relatively short period of time, I feel like I've revolutionized my mobile health. And in in so doing, I've learned so much and now I can share it with all my clients. Yeah, that's amazing. And I do know you, but you look healthy to me. You always did. You always looked healthy. But when you did mention it, the last time I saw it, I was like, you know what? Yeah, that, that is true. So there's a there's a vibrancy to your skin. That was like the first thing that I noticed because sometimes when we're going through things, it really does manifest in our facial expressions, in our even in our resting face, you know, like you know that there's maybe a little fatigue there or the skin might be a little dry, but you just looked vibrant. And I think when I came to see you, it was cold outside and my skin was dry, you know, so I, I did notice that. I'm excited to learn about all the different things that you offer. And I wanted to ask first about what it was that you did to help yourself because you eventually came to that level of awareness that something had to change. And I really want people to understand that it's not just about one thing, that you can just do this one thing and you're going to be fine. But it's Mm -hmm. a holistic approach to making sure that you are healthy. And it all starts with your mindset, your mental health. And it trickles down from there, like you said. So tell us now about how those IV infusions helped you. And what exactly is an IV infusion? Because we are seeing a lot of different places now offering it. Not every place is led by a medical professional. Some of them are led by nurses. And I've seen several of them as well locally. But I definitely want to, want people to understand, like, what is in an IV infusion? Is it just saline with some vitamins? Like, tell, explain what, what that is, please. Yes. So in general terms, IV vitamin therapy or IV nutrient therapy, that's a general term for a treatment where there's a, a solution of sodium chloride or saline, it's called, and various vitamins or minerals or amino acids can be added to that solution. So you can have a solution that's mostly hydration, mostly sodium chloride with very few vitamins, minerals, amino acids in it, or you could have one that is very rich in those ingredients, depending on how it is customized or what a person's goals are or what what ails them and what they're hoping to achieve. So an IV is inserted into a vein, into your arm, and it takes about one hour for the fluid to go into your arm. The purpose of delivering it intravenously is because the gut is a huge barrier to absorbing any type of nutrients. So for example, most of the vitamin supplements that we take diligently end up in the toilet, and the absorption of those things is roughly five to 20% or or less. Mm -hmm. So this is a way of bypassing the gut, bypassing the liver, which also is metabolizes things so that 
they're they're not as useful to our body and we can deliver much higher doses than we can obtain orally. So when you talk about vitamins and minerals, let's say, let me give you an example, or let's use me as an example, because when I came to you, I was experiencing some some severe fatigue, not just some, like severe fatigue. I was in pain. I had gastric pain. I was dealing with anemia. So tell everybody what it was that you yeah. were able to do for me. Use yeah. me as, as your case. Yes, absolutely. So you received a mixture of six B-complex vitamins plus magnesium with a little bit of calcium and high dose vitamin C. I believe you also got glutathione and I'll, I'll, I will explain the benefit of each thing. So after age 40, most people do not absorb B vitamins very well. The B vitamins are important for energy, for metabolism, for organ health, and for making red blood cells in in the case of B12. So by replenishing the B vitamins in high dose, you get all those benefits that I just stated. The magnesium and the calcium are important for bone health and for muscle health. Magnesium specifically is a very common deficiency in most people. So magnesium is found to be low in people with low mood, like depressed people have low magnesium. People who don't sleep well or have restless leg syndrome or any type of insomnia or sleep disorder are usually magnesium deficient. People with any type of respiratory chronic illness like asthma, uh, they're deficient in magnesium. And magnesium is important for immune health, for muscle relaxation, and for gut health. So magnesium is ubiquitously good for everybody. So you got the benefit of that. The the calcium is in there just to kind of balance out the magnesium because in IV formulations, you have to like balance certain minerals. High dose vitamin C has a very long list of benefits. Vitamin C is an antiviral, antibacterial. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's good for seasonal allergies. It is a cancer preventative. And in very high dose, it actually, vitamin C shrinks cancer tumors. It is a muscle detoxifier in in the sense of like sports recovery. And vitamin C is one of the few things in this world that builds collagen. So it's very important for joint health and for skin health. So vitamin C is like this miraculous substance that we can't get enough of. And the dose, for example, when I was saying, you know, you're getting much higher doses in the IV, you received 10 grams of vitamin C in your IV. So if you were to take orally 10 grams, you you know, the vitamin C for 1000 milligrams is like a big fat horse pill. So you would have to take 10 of those by mouth and you would get a huge stomach ache and profuse diarrhea if you were to do that. And you should never do that. But via IV, it is just soaked into your body and it's very well tolerated. The other substance that you received is glutathione. Glutathione is the master antioxidant in the body. It is a mixture of three amino acids that is commonly found in our liver, in our skin, in our lungs. So by replenishing glutathione, you get the benefits of liver health, skin health, lung health. It's also very energizing and it's great for the immune system and it's an overall like miraculous, wonderful substance to that is depleted in most people. So that, you know, using you as yeah. an all those were all the great benefits that you were able to get. Yeah. And I feel that for me, because by the time I came to you, I was, I was a hot mess. <laughs> and, you know, I teach a lot of classes throughout the week and I have to be like at high energy training clients moving. And then I was taking classes also for myself and, and doing some weight training. And then I had to drop the weight training for a while. I had to stop going to certain classes that I liked for myself because I just couldn't handle it anymore. And I was always achy. So the one thing that I didn't notice right away is is that soreness that went away. And I'll tell you this, because the day that I went to you was on a Monday. And that Monday, usually on Mondays, I go to a class where it's a hit class. I do a lot of push-ups, a lot of squat jumps and burpees and things like that, and a lot of core work. And usually, you know, I I feel the burn. I feel the burn and then I have to take a little break and then get back into it. That day, I didn't feel any burn. And I felt great after 
the the workout. I didn't. I felt like, oh my goodness, my muscles. There's like no soreness whatsoever. And usually after that class, I'm sore for about three days, no soreness for the rest of the week. So I was like, okay, it was the magnesium that really did help. But the the effects I think were more prominent even a week or two after where I felt my energy just shoot up. And it really did help me tremendously because I'm at a level now that I feel like my energy is where it was before all of this started happening. And I'm just so happy that this is good. My mindset is good and my energy level is great. And what I would love to know now is we talk a lot about mental health and being that as we're recording this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Tell us about some of the different cocktails that you may have for people who are currently going through anxiety or depression, something that maybe has helped you in the past as well. Yeah. So the nutrients that are helpful for any type of low mood or anxiety are, like we mentioned, magnesium, then fluorine, which is an amino acid. It's available as an intramuscular injection, which is super fast and easy. If somebody were to do that once a week, it would help with their energy and their mood. Also, vitamin D. Vitamin D is critical for for a, a healthy mood. For example, like winter blues is a low vitamin D and vitamin D is a very common deficiency. So anybody could benefit from that. Besides the the nutrients that I offer, there are substances that are helpful for mental health disorders such as ketamine and also the peptide therapy, which is the other things in my toolbox that I offer. So the the first step I would say for anybody who who has any type of medical problem that is complex like that, like a mental health disorder, is to get very comprehensive blood work, ideally, to, to check the vitamin D level and to check basic nutrients in the blood. Sometimes there is something that is abnormal that you can fix and you can explain some of the, the low energy or the low mood on a nutrient deficiency, such as vitamin D. I have seen that. But very often you find that everything comes back as normal. And that's also important information because it gives you peace of mind like, oh, gosh, you know, like nothing is medically wrong with me. I suffer from, you know, a spiritual malady. So then you can address it from whatever tool you want to use to to improve the mindset. So but if let's say you are addressing your mindset from whether it's talk therapy or whatever your modality is, the nutritional part or the other medications can help as well. So like I'm I'm using myself as an example, I concurrently last year, I did my mindset coaching very intensely twice a week, then once a week. But I also did a treatment of ketamine therapy, which is what made me become interested in the world of using psychedelic substances as medicine. And there are, besides ketamine, there's many things coming up the pipelines like the psilocybin or MDMA that I'm learning about so that when when they do become legalized to use of medicine, which I think they will be, that is another thing that I can add to my toolbox or hopefully other practitioners as well can offer these things because there's so many things in medicine that are underutilized or that we're just learning about that are going to benefit us in the future as long as it's open-minded to it. Yeah, because there's so much going on now in the world of technology that we see. We've seen it all around us tangibly. We can actually see it. We can touch it. And just like there are big advances in technology, there's huge advances in medicine also. And being able to stay at the forefront of that and also being open-minded and open-minded enough to want to learn more about these things, maybe asking your medical provider the right questions or getting the right type of tests. And sometimes even that is not enough because I know that there are doctors who are so busy right now that don't have the time really to learn about these new modalities and these new therapies. So we have to be extremely proactive with our health. So let me ask you about ketamine treatment and explain to us what that is. I'm not too familiar with it, so I would love to know personally. So ketamine is 
referred to as the battlefield anesthetic. So it's a very old medication that has a very good safety record because it does not cause any respiratory or cardiac depression, which means that it, it, it's not going to make you stop breathing or make your heart slow down, which is the fear with most people when they hear you know, any type of anesthesia medicine, that is the concern. So this medicine is unique in that regard in that it does not suppress your breathing in your heart. So it's very safe. The way the ketamine is used is in a very low dose compared to how it is used in hospitals in, in order to you know knock a person out for surgery or for procedure. So ketamine is microdosed, basically. It's a very low dose. And the client stays awake and the ketamine works in, in different ways. So one way it works is that it does create somewhat of a, a mild psychedelic experience. So the benefit of that is that it makes you see yourself and see your situation and see your problems in a, a new way. If perhaps you were stuck in a certain way of thinking, it expands your mind, quote, you know, to think of things in a different light. Uh, it also works physically as an anti-inflammatory in your brain. It creates plasticity, which again is like new connections in your brain cells to think differently. And it specifically works on NMDA receptors, which is the receptor that allows the amino acid glutamate to circulate in our body. Glutamate is like a happy amino acid. So it's it's something that, you know, since we are chemical beings as well, if we alter our brain chemistry and our body chemistry to have more of these beneficial neurotransmitters, it also helps elevate the mood. The ketamine is recommended to use along with some sort of talk therapy, although it's not like a, a hard rule to kind of integrate, you know, the experience that that you felt during the ketamine trip to see how that relates to the situations that you're trying to work through. The protocol is to, it can be given either IV or it can be given orally. The benefit of the IV is that it's a little bit of a more intense experience. It's medically monitored and it is it's just a little bit more intense. The oral ketamine is convenient. It's less expensive and it's done in the comfort of a person's home. And it is the similar protocol to IV ketamine where it's recommended to have six treatments done twice a week over a three-week time period. And statistically, the benefit to depression, anxiety, PTSD is that 70% of people who try this therapy experience a 70% improvement in their mood, which is a remarkable statistic because for comparison, any type of SSRI or like the typical antidepressants like Prozac, Epexor, the Lexapro, the, the typical antidepressant medications have about a 30% efficacy rate and they have a whole bunch of side effects such as sexual side effects low libido, sometimes more fatigue, and they are not necessarily always as beneficial as one hopes to be. So ketamine statistically is twice as effective without having any of the side effects. So that's a like very remarkable comparison. Based on what you have already done with your experience, who would be the perfect candidate for this that comes to you and, and tells you about what they're going through? You're like, okay, you're a perfect candidate for this treatment. So the perfect candidate is somebody that has tried other medications or talk therapy and has not had good success with it. Perhaps they're still on a medication and still feeling depressed or anxious or still ruminating with the PTSD, or perhaps they just gave up on medication altogether and just, you know, suffer quietly with with their depressed mood or their anxiety. That's pretty much the only criteria because from there I do screen them, you know, to make I, ch I take a, a full medical history and psychiatric history, but there are very few reasons to refuse someone from this therapy because it is very safe. 
You also mentioned peptide therapy, and I've heard a lot about that. But tell us about your experience and who could benefit. What are the benefits of using Mm -hmm. peptide therapy? So peptide therapy, I learned about myself only in the past six to eight months or so, which I think is shameful because I've been a doctor for 25 years and I have I have not heard about these medications. I call them medications because peptide is a very nonspecific term. Specifically, what a peptide is, is a sequence of amino acids strung together. And if you have more than 50 amino acids, then it's called a protein. And then it would be called a medication or a hormone, whereas an amino acid is smaller. There are examples of peptides in big pharma. For example, insulin is a peptide. The weight loss medications that are very popular now, such as Ozempic, are peptides. So they're sequences of amino acids. The interest in peptides for doctors who are in the alternative health realm, like I am now, is that these substances are extremely safe. They have little to no side effects. And the purpose of them is to use them as substances in our body to upregulate something that you want to achieve. So so for example, a a common peptide is called ipamorelin. And the other challenge is that I have to learn how to pronounce these things. Mm -hmm. So the growth hormone peptides, when injected, they tell your pituitary gland to secrete growth hormone. Growth hormone is a substance that we had when we were kids, teenagers, young adults, and it caused us to make more lean muscle, to lose belly fat, to have more energy, to have better libido, to have a better mood, to have more vitality. Over time, the growth hormone goes down with age. So A peptide that causes your body to make more growth hormone will create all those benefits. But you cannot overdose on the peptide and you cannot overdose on the growth hormone because the peptide can only tell your pituitary to make growth hormone. Your body will not make too much growth hormone. It knows where to to stop. So for that reason, this peptide is very safe. And likewise, peptides that used similarly are are safe for that reason. So there are peptides to achieve a better body composition. There are peptides to improve mood. Since Mm -hmm. we're talking about mood, there's one called C-Lank and C-Max. Those are nasal spray peptides that help decrease anxiety, help improve mood, help improve sleep. The Zempic Wunjaro Wigovi it is made by compounding pharmacies, and I am in love with those peptides because, okay, cosmetically, it's wonderful that there is something available that helps weight loss, and it truly is effective. It's not like those diet pills that you take over the counter that I have spent thousands upon thousands of dollars on throughout my life that didn't work. Like this, these peptides actually work, but my interest in the semaglutide, terzepatide, which is the the weight loss peptide, is that they can be used as a healthy aging modality because if you dose them in very tiny doses, so as to, let's say the weight, weight loss is not your goal, but what they do is that they lower your blood glucose and it, so doing it lowers your hemoglobin A1C. It actually prevents type 2 diabetes. And it helps your it, to prevent insulin resistance. And mm-hmm. by preventing those things, you actually are slowing down your aging process or, or doing it in a more healthy way. So with all the education that I've been reading about these things and from people that are more expert than I am and using these medications, they are using it in, in that method, not just to lose lean, but for people, let's say they already are at their at an ideal weight, but to, they're using it to prevent diseases of aging and to maintain insulin sensitivity. 
which I think is a miraculous, amazing, wonderful thing. So I personally have been taking like a, a microdose of terzepatide or semaglutide with that goal in mind. So I have been my own guinea pig with all kinds of peptides in the past few months. I think that they are revolutionary. They're greatly underutilized because most mainstream doctors do not know about them, but they are the 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 next you know amazing thing in in medicine. I really like that so much. It can be used for everyone, really, whether you're trying to lose weight or whether you're trying to just maintain that vitality. We're all aging and we want to age well. For me, I would use it to maintain. I would use it to make sure that my joints remain strong or I strengthen them even more, maintain that healthy muscle. And then there are women who are struggling tremendously with weight loss. They, they're doing all the right things. They go to the doctor, the, the glands and everything are supposed to be working well. Their hormones are fine, but they can't seem to drop the weight. So I really believe that speaking to somebody like you would help them tremendously. And the question that I have for you is, I'm sure by now everybody can, can see, what makes your practice different from every other practice out there, not just the medical practice, but also those places that are offering IV therapy? So I'm trying to be very easy, efficient, and accessible to my clients. And first of all, I call them clients and not patients, because when you are a client, you're empowered, you're, you're informed, and, and you participate. So there is a difference between being a patient and a client. So with, with me, you're always a client. The, what makes my practice different is that I am trying to make as much as possible everything via, except for the IV therapies, everything available via telehealth. So I'm able to order very comprehensive blood work that you can do from even the comfort of your home where a phlebotomist comes out to your house and draws blood or you go to a low school lab work. I can perform telehealth visits. And then any peptides that I prescribe are shipped directly to your house. So the number one thing is just convenience, ease, efficiency. And that's so important in our society right now. The other thing that I think there's two more things that I pride myself on. One is that I, I straddle the world of mainstream medicine and alternative medicine. To me, do whatever works. Like if you need an antibiotic, great, take the antibiotic. If you don't need an antibiotic, don't take the antibiotic. If you need a peptide, take a peptide. I don't dismiss any type of modality or I, I'm not judgmental about using different things. I try to be open-minded and especially to things that I'm not so familiar with. I am trying to read and learn as fast as I possibly can. Uh, because, you know, just like any rabbit hole, the more you know about something, the more you know how much you don't know. So it's it's a race to to learn. And I feel like I'm very motivated to learn and to do new things. And the other thing that I that I pride myself on is that because of my own struggles with with my eating disorder, with my mental health struggles, and also having a child who is severely disabled, I am very empathetic to people's struggles. And I try to be very ethical with, with my medical care. So for example, if somebody does come to me who is overweight and they're trying to lose weight and they've been on every diet and diet pill and so on, and I do offer them a weight loss peptide, I make sure that that is being done concurrently with mindset work of some sort so that when they get off that medication, they can maintain that. And that so that that person knows that there, there is no magic pill, magic bullet, magic injection. I mean, there are, there are things that help like these peptides are absolutely miraculously helpful and I adore them, but it's, it's everything that you do in life. It's, it's how you think it's how you talk. It's how you carry yourself. It's, the food you eat, it's how you exercise and who you surround yourself with. It's the sunshine outside and it's the whole the whole picture. So I definitely take that to heart in my practice. That's beautiful. 
That's that's what I love. That's the approach that everybody should have when they go see their doctor. Do you take insurance also or not? Unfortunately, I do not because uh, just hassle factor and these modalities, they're in the realm of alternative medicine. They are, quote, not the standard of care. For that reason, medical insurance does not cover these things. And it's a shame because it should be the standard of care to be really proactive, to combine the, the mindset with the body and the habits that we have. And one thing that you also mentioned is the people that you surround yourself with. You hit it all on the nail because it's all part of our, our environment, our internal environment, our external environment, and it all plays a role in how we feel and how we behave. And it can cloud our judgment if we are not surrounded by the right people, if we don't have that awareness about how we feel and how the things that we may be doing may be harming us. So that level of awareness and that drive to be proactive is what can really help us to feel better, to seek out the right type of care. And I know it's an investment, which is why you called your business invest in your health, because if we're not investing in our health, then what are we really taking care of? Our health is everything. And it's important. And I really commend you and congratulate you on on doing this, on taking care of you and then using that to be able to bring to everyone else all of these amazing therapies that you offer in a holistic way. So thank you, Dr. Julia, for helping me personally. <laughs> if there's anything else that you want to share, please go yes. ahead. My website is investinmyhealth.com. And that's that's how you would find me. My, my contact information is all there. And you can conveniently book your own appointment without calling at all. I mean, you can't call me. My telephone is 973-951-4894, but you can book a visit directly online. I am located in Boonton, New Jersey for any in-person visits, but I really hope to extend my reach for hundreds of miles past that because of the capabilities of telehealth. Yes. Wonderful. Now, are you available to speak at different events or if somebody wanted you to speak with them or speak to their audience, what kind of people would you want to reach out to you? Oh, that would be such an honor. I would love to do that because the things that I do, they have a big education hurdle right now. It's not a common set of tools that I have. So I would love to tell people about the world of peptides or IV nutrients or ketamine, all the things that I do. And also, I didn't even mention, but hormone replacement therapy, specifically more so for men with testosterone. And it doesn't mean I, I didn't touch base on that, but there, there's a way to optimize and not necessarily, you know, give a big dose to, to you know, for muscle building or anything like that, but it's just for testosterone optimization. So I am expanding my my set of tools. And I would love to speak to any any group that is interested in hearing me talk. I, I'm, I welcome it. And I meant to ask you this also, women who are going through perimenopause or women who are currently in menopause and dealing with all of the symptoms, what would you recommend for women like that? I mean, they're going to have to contact you anyway, but I would love for the audience to know that there is help available. Yes. So I would recommend starting with blood work to uh, to see all the hormone levels. Female hormones are, are more complex than, than male hormones. And so currently I am relying on a colleague, medical doctor friend to, to navigate that world. Mm -hmm. So I'm very transparent about some things I know, some things I don't know, because I am a pediatrician and this is a new medical specialty that I'm entering. So with female hormones, I am able to do blood work. I'm able to interpret blood work. And then from there, we will go together as doctor and client and, and find solutions. Thank you so much, Dr. Julia, for spending this time explaining everything. And I can't wait to see you talking more about this online, on other people's podcasts, writing articles, and just being able to share all of this wonderful knowledge with the world. So we need it badly. So thank you so much for being here on Get Intentional with Manny. Oh, 
My pleasure. Oh my gosh. I'm honored. Thank you so much. That is it for today, my friend. Thank you for being here. See you next time on Get Intentional with Mary.